Today we take a look at an advanced way of using curves as well as all of the versus curves. All right, so jumping in here, we have our first shot. Let's close this up. We have our first shot here and we kind of have an overcast day. There isn't a ton of detail in the sky here. There isn't really much to see. The majority of this is gray and kind of flat looking. Uh, as we progress through this shot, uh, we're sort of getting that same thing where it's just gray. There's a little bit of blue in here, but for the most part, there isn't much detail throughout this shot. Uh, when it comes to the sky. If we take a look over here, um, traditionally it starts on keyframes, but you can click this little button to see your scopes, and we can actually see the information for each of the channels. And what we'll notice is that right here along the top, nothing's actually touching it. It's right right below it. So we have some, some space that we can work with this because all of this isn't clipped. Clipped is when you have your values pushed to the top like this and then you just have a solid color. Um, but currently it's not a solid color. There is detail in here. It's just very hard to see because there isn't much uh, contrast between the high points that are bright and then the not so bright lower points. So there is some detail in here. We just have to uh, manipulate that. So how we would do that is we would traditionally use curves. There are a couple of different ways of doing this, but we would use curves where we would, you know, make a modified like little S curve, something like this, where we get more contrasty looking, uh, more of a contrasty shot, but typically, we would normally put at the higher end, we would put one and we would lift this. And all we're doing is just really compressing that. So we don't really want to do that. If we pulled it down, we can pull it down and get more of this, but we're also dropping a lot of this mid-tone detail, which is this barn here. So how would we go about doing this and not have it affect the majority of this other stuff, but have it affect the sky? What we could do is we could use qualifiers. So qualifiers, you can pick a value. So the eyedropper, I can click right here. And now we have a value with some red, uh, lower saturation levels and a medium high amount of uh, luminance, which is your brightness. So if I click on this little button so I can see what I have selected, I have the barn selected. So traditionally you would pick a qualifier and then you'd be able to modify that qualifier you know, to your liking. So I can modify this barn and get it to look a different color. We can take that sort of approach to this, but we could use just the luminance value to grab just the sky so we can just modify just the sky itself. So I turned off the hue and the saturation here, and then all we have to do is just move up this low level till we get to a point where we don't have the majority of this uh, building in here anymore, as you can see. Uh, when we move it up, all the stuff that's in gray won't be affected by this node anymore. So we are just lifting this up a bit and we're getting rid of most of this. One thing that you have to watch here is I have a tree over here. If I lift this too high, what happens is that tree becomes like a blob. So we don't really want to do that. What we could do instead is we can lift or we can move this softness so that we start to soften out around a lot of that stuff. We can add a bit more softness and we can soften out around that stuff. And then all of these like mid grays and stuff, they'll be affected, but they just won't be affected as much. We can do just something like that. Now, if we come into our curves, all we're going to be affecting is that sky. So currently our, our, um, top point is up here at the top, we can pick somewhere be right below here and then pull this down and it should separate the majority of this uh, information here. So if I just grab here and I pull, we're kind of separating this and then we can put like a kind of like modified S curve in here. And if you see over in here, now we're getting a lot more detail in the uh, clouds. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit much here, but you get, you're getting the idea of how this works. Additionally, something else that you could do is you could use your contrast setting down here and just move your pivot. So how a pivot works is our contrast is affecting this whole thing and our middle point is right here. The pivot is where that middle point is. So if we would move that, that pivot to something else, what you'll notice is now 
the pivot moved up and it started to separate this data up here. So we're sort of getting that same thing. And it's not so intense as when we were using the uh, curves adjustment here. So that's kind of another way of doing this. And we don't have the blotchy stuff that was over here because it's moving everything kind of uniformly. So now we have the ability to affect the sky here. We could change its color. We, if we wanted to, we could come into our temperature and we can adjust the temperature, make it warmer, or cooler, you know, and so on. That's one way of working to modify your curves is by using a qualifier to select just an area and then we can use our curves adjustment. So let's go on to another shot here. So this shot is just some, I just wanted to grab this shot quick cause it's just a bunch of color. If I boost up the saturation, what we can see here is we have a reddish color and a blue color that's coming through some of these uh, glass chess pieces. So if we come up here to our curves, we have a, our customs curves, which we've been using and most people understand curves as being these curves that you can adjust the red, green, and blue channels, or you can combine them and affect them all together, or just click Y and then just uh, affect luminance. So if we, drop down to let's say hue versus hue, what you can do is you can take a, a color value and you can change it into a different color value. So here is our color wheel. If we wanted to take a red and make it blue, we could just move those colors around. To, you know, if you were to grab your offset wheel and move everything to the blue, you're affecting everything around as well, um, but we can, with the hue versus hue, we can pick just a color value. So we clicked right here with our uh, qualifier selected. And when you go into these uh, curves, it's automatically selected. And once you select a color, then it's going to pick that color and a little bit to the left and to the right of it. And now right here, the outline is where that color resides. We can move this up or down and we can adjust that particular color. Now there's a, a bit here that is kind of looking a little bad. Uh, if you wanted to uh, add a bit more of it in, you could just slide this over. And now we're getting a little bit better with the gradient here. Uh, when you're moving these to try to reset them, it's the one that's active is always the one that is the uh, outline of the circle. You could just simply click down here and it'll reset. Over on the curves, if you want it to uh, reset or get something to come back, you could just hold the alt and then it would snap. It would snap back there. So, and as well, if we were to move this, we could always snap, but yeah, that's how that would work. Now going back over into our hue versus hue, obviously this doesn't look very good. So how could we use this hue versus hue in an actual shot? So if we come over to an actual shot, this was shot with a Sony camera and for some reason, um, tungsten lights like these um, Edison bulbs, they always, they don't really look that great. There's, it's a weird yellow. It looks kind of like a sick yellow. I don't know why it is what it is, but we can modify this and it's a very slight modification. All we want to do is just add a little bit of like an orangey, uh, reddish into here and it'll really make this look a lot better. So if we were to click somewhere in here to get a yellow and then we could just simply just modify this just so slightly, I would say something just like that and then just bring this down a little bit and add a little bit of red into here and we will bring this endpoint down and just clicking here. We'll have it go to zero. And now we're kind of getting somewhere. There is a bit more, it's kind of milky. So let's just add another node in here and just drop down our value a little bit and get kind of uh, a little closer to uh, where we probably wanna be. I would say something, something like that. Okay, so now we're sort of getting somewhere. So where we were, that gross yellow, to kind of where we're at now. Everything's looking a little bit better. There's a little bit of uh, extra red in some of the areas. 
as you'll see up here there's a little bit of red i don't know if that'll show through youtube but there's a little bit of red up here uh, an easy way to show this is if we were to what you see on youtube a lot is a lot of people say okay you know in your mids and highs we're gonna push them red or orange and then we're going to take our shadows and we're gonna cool them down by bringing them into blues and cyan. So if we were to bring this down to blues and cyans like they say to do in those, what ends up happening is this is supposed to be black, but it's not, it's a blue. Um, and you get a lot of these like ca color casts that personally I can notice and I don't think that it looks very appealing. So what I would do to not have that amateur-ish look there is just take a look into a shadow, any shadow, anywhere in your house, uh, wherever it may be. And what you'll notice is where, it, where things are lit, they have a good level of saturation. And then as they go into the shadows, what ends up happening is that saturation, that brightness and color starts to diminish. It doesn't turn blue, it's just diminishing. Now, if you're outside and you have a warm sun beating on the side of one mountain and on the other side, there isn't a sun. And then you have like some type of like atmosphere diffusion off into the distance, obviously the other side is going to be a little more on the blue-ish side. But we're not in, we're not outside here. We're inside, we have black TV screens and a um, speaker over here as well as her shirt. And there, we're, we have this blue tone that's being added to a lot of this. So we would wanna get rid of that, obviously. And then back in here, this is starting to look purple because we had red, it's red bricks, we're adding blue into there, it's a darker value. So it's adding that blue on there. So we're also getting purple back here. So let's get rid of some of that. If we come into our luminous versus saturation, what we're taking is luminous levels and we're reducing the saturation for this. So we could just click down here and this is going to give you a good starting point for your shadows and where they fall off. We could just bring down um, some of the saturation in a lot of this. And what you'll notice is that in our screen, we start to lose that saturation. Actually, let's uh, make this on another node so we can turn this on and off. But what you'll see is as we pull this down, you'll start to reduce the saturation over here. You can also click there and you can get where that value falls. So you could bring this down. You don't wanna go overkill on this because if there is some luminance in an area, uh, you are gonna have some color. So just don't go uh, you know, crazy with it. But that's the overall idea. A lot of the darker values, you're gonna want to not really have much color in them because they're not being lit up by anything to represent that color. But there will be some color in things that are in shadows, just not much. So that is a way as you can see the blue here and now it's a black and it's looking a bit better as well as you know everything else his hair isn't blue anymore it's represented by black which is i would think that someone that has black hair um, isn't going to go and get it dyed for a shoot and it is still black. Okay, so that is one way of using the luminance versus saturation. We talked about the hue versus hue. Now let's go into how hue versus saturation works. Now to make, if you're, if you're, if you're just jumping into DaVinci Resolve and you're not, you don't understand how I'm making these other nodes, um, you can just simply come up to, wow. Where the hell is it? You can come up to color and then nodes and then add node here. It's just Alt S. You can also come over here. You can click over here, add node, and then you can pick a node to, to add. Okay, so now that I am, now I have a clean node that I'm gonna be adding here. There, uh, hue versus saturation, it's just it's simply what it is. You can pick a color and you can make it more saturated. If you wanted the bottle or her shirt, so let's just pick her shirt and now I can add more saturation into her shirt. As you can see here, we're just adding more saturation into things. And as you can see, everything else that is a similar value is going crazy. So we could just simply take a mask or also known as a power window and then just select an area that you want to have affected by that particular uh, selection. And then there we go. Now we have just her shirt is affected by it and it's showing that red value. We could also change the color of it if we want it to, 
but that's the idea here. A lot of the times where I personally use this is let's say I have a shot of a park and there is a stop sign in the corner, um, but I really wanna get bright saturated grass that looks great as well as a nice blue sky. But then we have a stop sign there that is just blazingly bright red. Uh, we can tone down that red a little bit by picking that red, dropping down that saturation, and then we have a shot that looks a little bit better and that stop sign, or if you're looking at this, you can see, boom, look at how bright that red shirt is. Um, you can bring things back into your grade. So if you have something that's really saturated, you can bring it back into your grade so that it looks a little bit better. The next thing that we have here is sat versus sat. So the idea with sat versus sat that I personally use it for is if I'm trying to recreate a look or I'm trying to recreate like a film look or something of that nature. What ends up happening with a lot of film stuff is you don't really have um, saturation levels that are really bright. You do have a good saturation level across everything, but it's not really bright. So you want to take, you know, all of your saturation and you want to bring it up, but you're going to have, if you just move the saturation curve, it's going to move everything. So you're going to have a couple of pieces of saturation that are going to move up faster. And if you can see over here, because we have her, her shirt that's so saturated, this is the red. If you don't know how vector scopes work, it's pretty much set up the same way as a color wheel. We have red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. Same exact way as here. And then we have these little pieces. I just turned this up to 2X so that we can see it a bit better. We can see these pieces that are out and how bright they are. And you can see the majority of this shot is kind of on the red side and it's represented here. Let's say we wanted to tone all of the really out, the, the outliers I would call this. We wanna tone those back. We could simply use set versus set and it's taking one saturation value and then you can manipulate it to be something else. So we could take the brighter end here and we could tone this down. And what you'll see is we're manipulating here. We're bringing down that brighter value. You see that? And I think her shirt actually comes in a little bit further in and it does. We can tone this back a bit to, you know, kind of come back into the tonal range of the rest of the shot and not have it be that really bright value. And then we can have everything else the same and we just brought back. So we pretty much eliminated that here, but we didn't have to use, we didn't have to specify it just being, um, you know, a very particular part of the shot. We can bring the tonal values of the whole shot down to, um, to match everything else, or if you're going for a film stock, a particular film stock, you can tone it down to whatever that film stock would be recorded as. So that's kind of how I personally use the sat versus sat. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it on how I use curves in DaVinci. If you have experience using curves and you use them in a unique way, let me know in the comments. And I think that's pretty much it for this one. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.